Well, welcome to the uh, Gallup TV preview show for this Thursday, the 23rd of March, where we race at the Val. We're on the classic track. There are eight races carded. Got Alistair Cohen on the line with the eight races to go. And race number one uh, is a work rider's plate. Uh, this is for fillies and mares, uh, maiden plate, that is. It's over 2,000 meters, and it's a small field of seven runners that go to post. Let's bring up the field whilst we introduce Alistair. Uh, good day to you, Alistair. How are you doing, Boot? Hi, Dees. Yeah, all good, thanks. Um, it's, it's actually a nicer card, I think, at the Vol than it was at Turfentain on Tuesday. Obviously, the results suggested that it was a man field. It's been two big six carryovers in a row in the half belt, so that just shows the tide that I've been battling trying to tip for Gallup TV. But uh, um, I'm fairly confident that we might turn things around here on this there are one or two races that are tricky but uh, i think overall we can make some money yeah i think uh, punters exotic players especially pick six players have been on the wrong end of the stick over the last few meetings race number one number one seven to two number two at 17 to 10 three at seven to two 33 to 10 number four and eight to one numbers six and seven this does form part of the exotics it's the first leg of the bar pot and uh, I think you'll do well to try and get through with the minimum spend because there is some form to work around here, Alistair. And uh, one of these runners going to get it right, if not the first timer. Number seven, Priya's Treasure. Yeah, Priya's Treasure, funny enough, is a half sister to the sprinter with Mike Miller, rulership. So making her debut over 2,000 meters is interesting. Um, to say the least. Um, my horse here will be number four on the guest list. Anati Fanny takes a ride for Mike Decock. Even though Mike's been quiet of late, I think that this could be the one that they all need to beat because I'm a big fan of Anati. Anati um, has, has done a lot of work for Mike over the years, and, and Mike almost considers him his family. And the run to Jet Dynasty last time was fair, finishing third. The second horse, Mo the Man, uh, runs again soon. And uh, I know that Mo the Man was all the race. I know that Jet Dynasty subsequently did nothing in the Derby trial. He was a trifle disappointing there. But I think that uh, on the guest list, best runs, is the best form on offer. Ma Aquiline was um, unlucky last time after blowing it at the start, finishing second behind Wild Forever. She's got to be considered. She finished in front of Queen Britannia on that run. And then Impression showed very good improvement last time when trying the work riders' ranks for the first time on the inside track and again finished in front of Queen Britannia. So one and two are make the main dangers, but there's not much depth to that form, and there's a little bit more with number four on the guest list. So I think she's the one to make a winning start in race one. I think Alistair spot on with the bipod there. Numbers one and two should be good enough. Surely, surely these horses should be good enough. Numbers one and two in the first leg of that bipod. The place accumulator begins in race number two. Now, this is a merit-rated uh, 80 uh, handicap. It's over 2,400 meters. And at the time of recording, you can take out number three, Banner Bridge. Uh, so we'll have six runners that will go to post. Liked your horse on Tuesday, Alistair, but... You know, that was a bit disappointing. It was a trifle disappointing, Dees, but uh, finishing fourth, in, you know, was, it was a step up in class for him again. Um, all the horses that he beat last time turned the form around, so it obviously wasn't his run. I think the inside track may have caught him out. Um, that's the, what, eighth time he's been on the inside track. He's never finished better than fourth, so um, we'll stick to the more... Um, more galloping courses in the future. But uh, with regard to race number two, small field, um, the place accumulator could be the way to go on the card. A bank at number four, Great Affair. He's been banging at the door of late. He finished in front of Captain Chorus in their run on the 29th of January. So that's a big plus. But I also liked the run last time behind Absolute Value. I actually thought he was a tad unlucky not to have you know, almost been involved in a photo with absolute value last time up. He was a little bit slow into stride. You know, he's a he's a trier. He's obviously not the most talented around number four great affair, but I think at this level he's got a good chance. Another horse that stares me in the face is number five, a fraud. Uh, excuses for the last run when returning coughing in the Aquanaut handicap. He's a good deal better than that run suggests. And uh, I think if number five of Fraud brings his best to the course, he could be a danger, especially with the back booking of Gavin Larina. When Gavin rides for Stephen Moffat, that's something to take note of. Yeah, I like number five of Fraud as a possibly the right. I'm not reading out the betting here, guys, because uh, Banner Bridge was quoted at 17 to 10 when I took down the betting. And after the scratching, there will be a lot of adjustments here. 
in race number two. So leading with number four, Great Affair, hoping to confirm that last start. Alistair Cohen gives a mention to number five, Afraad. And I think uh, those two horses should be good enough there for the play secure. It's a small field. Uh, you're trying to get through with maybe one or two horses and trying to get it right in the second race. The third race starts off the big one, the pick six at 13.30. It's over 1,000 meters. And uh, I find it strange uh, how uh, the races were set out for the day. But uh, thankfully for us exotic players, especially if you like the pick six, you only have to include two horses to be through here. Numbers six and 11 are the only race runners here, Alistair. Uh, just how, the way they're betting, it's horses in single figures, number two, seven to one, four at six to one, number seven, seven to one. Eight has found anti-post betting support. This is from Hollywood Bets, and that's from five to one into thirty-three to ten. Nine is at seven to two, and eleven rose tinted at five to one. Whilst I mentioned that it is a nice leg for exotic players like the pick six, you're only going to include two and bring in that pick six rule. For bipod and place accumulator players, wow, this is an absolute minefield because you're going in blind. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, as you say, the structure of the meeting is a little bit iffy, but you can see why they've done it because of the small field in race two. Um, but but I think you would rather have people winning uh, than not. And uh, anyway, be that as it may, you're right about the pick six rule. Princess can take advantage of that. I've gone with three first timers as um, horses on my radar. Number seven, Open Highway, um, the son of Bar. So I'd expect Ashley Fortune to get this horse ready up. What is interesting, though, is that Ryan Munger takes her out of a stable companion who went to Cape Town first up, but bled. Number 11, Rose Tinted. So there's a little bit of food for thought, but drawn on the inside. There's a little bit of a worry, although it's been dry on the half out, certainly since I got back, there's or maybe been one or two drops of rain. So I don't think the, the, the perceived track bias is going to be all that evident on Thursday. But uh, interesting jockey arrangement. Seven open highway makes appeal on breeding, uh, certainly over a thousand meters, whereas stable jockey and the trip to Cape Town about number 11 rose tinted. It's interesting. Eight ready to charge. The mother was trained by Mark and Adam as he, San Furman. She won the Starling Stakes. Um, when she was a three-year-old on, on Charity Mile Down, the Grand Fanique. And San Fermin was tiny. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if Freddy the Charge has got any substance about him because he's obviously very, very well-bred. The Aussies are going along nicely. Another double for them on Tuesday at Turf and Scene. Um, so I think that he could be one to watch. And then number nine, Real Relief. I've heard nothing about Real, Real Relief. James Crawford, all from the connections. Um, nothing coming through the wires about the son of Rafif. But he is related to a very, very quick horse trained by Gavin Smith, a horse called Sugar Gun, who uh, was absolutely flat out, 1,000 meters, good horse down in Kabeka, um, but couldn't really go over 1,100 meters. But uh, anyway, the point is he's bred to be quick, he's bred to be forward. And I think number nine, real relief. Uh, just, just watch the betting on him because he could be interesting. You need to cover your bases in the opening leg of the pick six if you are looking for the outright winner. And as far as you're right, as far as the bar pot and place accumulator is concerned, you don't have the advantage of watching them go down to the start or watching the late money. So I think the, between those three first timers, one of them ought to run into the first three. The thing with young horses is by this time of the season, especially if you look at the high fell, well, Cape Town is not done. Uh, those horses will be, well, whichever they decide, will making their trek to KZN. But have we seen the best two old yet in Gauteng? You know, that's what, the, the, I don't think so, because this weekend will tell us a bit more with all those feature races. But often is the case that, um, you know, the horse comes out a bit later in the season than earlier, Alistair. Yeah, these I don't think so. I was, I was, I'm glad you asked that question. I think Sean Terry's got a particularly good crop of two-year-olds. And I actually spoke to Sean about them about a week ago. And he said, no, he's, he's happy with his two-year-olds. He's happy with how they're going. Uh, when I asked him, are there any more hiding away? He, he shied away from that question. But um, <laughs> Sean's, got good, Sean's got very, very good two-year-olds. But I must be honest, I haven't seen too much else that screams Hollywood bet Scott's full or screams Gelade or Gold Cup Day just yet. But uh, what that leads me to, to knowing is that some big yards have got some good ones hiding, hiding away for now. Yeah, you know, the other day I worked at Hollywood Bed Scottsville. That, therefore, the question and I asked Craig Udy, as we know, Mike Miller has forwarded these young horses. And I said, you know, you've stepped out all these trios thus far. You know, do you have many 
uh, back home, and you know, normally they have this conveyor belt of, he says, yeah, there's plenty more to come. Race number four is over 1,000 meters, and a lot of first timers here in the first leg of jackpot one. I'll tell you how they're betting. And number two is uh, Ben Bat. This is from Hollywood Bets. 18 to 10 to 12 to 10. There's money and proper money uh, anti-post for number two. That is the Stuart Pettigrew runner. Other horses in fig single figures, number five at seven to one. Number eight is a six to one shot. Number 12 is at six to one. And then it is 10 to one and better the balance. I was looking at this horse very closely, obviously with the unknowns in the race, but I think for the place accumulator and maybe even the bar pot, you can even stretch that to the pick six that this horse with the two runs could be the right horse in the field and the money could be spot on on horse number two. Uh, call me when you need me. I'll be shocked if she doesn't win these. Uh, she comes out of a feature race, been running third behind Mrs. Geriatrix. Um, her behavior that day was ordinary, to be honest, um, and that may have sort of compromised her performance slightly. I remember her going down to the start and behind the ball, she, she, wasn't, uh, she wasn't on best behavior, but... Um, I think even if she doesn't behave too well, she should win. In contrast to race three, the first time this year, bar eight Mary's green light and 12 Wudug, which uh, stretches out to when you're good, you're good. Um, both of them are bred for further. Um, the first time this year don't make too much appeal as far as their precociousness and forwardness um, may be concerned. So I think number two, call me when you need me, is very hard to beat. The very interesting runner here for me is number 11, Winter Path. Uh, watch that debut closely. She is going to improve, and I expect her to turn the form around with number five in Planting Lady. I think number 11, Winter Path, is the biggest danger for number two, call me when you need me. But with that said, I think feature race compared to non-feature race form, um, my money's definitely going towards the 12 to 10 on the favourite. Yeah, we are going all in here in race number four with horse number two, and hopefully this can change. Come on, we needed to change for the punters, and these good things need to arrive because they haven't. Race number five, 1,800 meters, maiden plate, and this is over 1,800 meters. Now, a very interesting race because number one uh, is at five to two, number two is at nine to two, four is at 11 to two, six at seven to one, Eight is at eight to one, and then it is ten to one and better the balance. Whilst there may be big gaps in the betting on the fixed odds betting market, I think it's a bit more open than it looks. Uh, do you have a you know a top three here for the pick six, or uh, you think it's wider than that? Uh, my top three in the pick six would be, I actually go four here. Ace Haslo Grande, one Puerto Plata, four Wonderworld, and two in Gogo Shesha. Um, you know, if, if this race wasn't over 2,000, uh, sorry, over 1,800 meters, I would be all in on number eight, Haslo Grande. Um, Stratospheric, who won by nearly 10 lanes, runs a race later. But I know that Paul Matchett really likes the son of Erupt. But it's a half-brother to a very good sprinter in the form of True to Life. I remember him going down to the start on debut. I remember the way that he stayed on on debut. Uh, look, I think we've got to exclude Stratospheric from that run because that was just a freakish performance. And Haslow Grande did most wrong except for the final 400 meters. But I'm, I'm a little bit concerned whether going 1,800 meters is coming a little bit too soon. If it's not, I think he will win. But also he takes on you know these horses that look like they're ready to win. So if I've got back up in the form of number one, Puerto Plata. He's obviously nowhere near as good as Puerto Manzano. Um, and he's got an awkward draw, but he's got Keegan DeMello on board. So, so that all set fair for another fair run. If it's his day, it's his day. Uh, four Wonderworld got to be a bit better than his last run suggests. I think pound for pound, wherever Puerto Plata runs, Wonderworld will be right next to him. It's one one between the two. They've met twice in the past. In fact, they've met three times in the past, and it's 2-1 to Wonderworld. And then number two, Ngogo Shersha, um, you know, I, to call a spade a spade, I think he's average, but I think he'll win a race one of these days. His last one was his best, but well, was one of his best performances behind Positive Attitude, who again was uh, first and second. We're well clear of the third place tour. So number two, Ngogo Shersha deserves some respect. But uh, place accumulator was one and eight, but I'll go with the four horses in the pick six in the jackpot. Just a, you know, a, a googly for you. Uh, between numbers one and six, Gavin Larina riding number six. How much can we read into that? Uh, nothing because Keen DeMello is first choice when it comes to the Werner's colors up on the half-old. So uh, 
I don't think Gavin's jumped ship. I just think it's a matter of uh, Keegan now being in the right place on the right day to ride Puerto Plata. Yeah, if you're looking for one more, possibly consider the stable companion number six, Air Fusion, in the pick six there. Race number six, 1,600 meters. It's a graduation plate, and uh, when we get these plated races and condition races, we often refer to the best-weighted column, and yeah, it's tipped by number, uh, it's topped by number two, Crimson King, in a very, very big way. Well, clear. I mean, if you're just going to judge him on his rating, not on what he represents in black and white, you think that he'll be too good on his rating, then... You're going to go for him in a big way, but his form of late, he needs to show us a bit more. But let's have a look at the betting. Number one, Destiny of Souls, three to one. Crimson King is at nine to two. And then we move along to number four. Alistair was talking about how this horse just uh, bolted away from his field last time out. That's at two to one. Five at seven to one. Seven at six to one, and then it is ten to one and better the balance. Very interesting runner, this number two Crimson King, because we remember him as a young horse, we remember him as a three year old, and uh, he's now with uh, the stable of Brett Crawford. Um, on ratings, of course, he achieved this rating very early in his career, Alistair. Uh, so, you know, those were running against the best of the best when it comes to his generation. Uh, but he's, he is coming down, you know, the handicap is being fair to him now that he's been off colour with his form. But an interesting horse to have for Brett Crawford up in Kauteng. I think he'll suit the tracks, but I think he also needs to come back to form. His last run the drum star was encouraging. You're spot on about him being the best weighted horse in the race, and pound for pound, he is the best horse in the race, and I don't think anything in the race will get to number two Crimson King's career best. A little bit worried about the distance, though. Um, I'd, I'd like to see him go 2002-4 sooner rather than later. Um, his, his, his best run during the uh, winter season last season suggests that he's, he's got a win coming, but you would like to see a little bit more. He goes into the pick six, but I've, I've gone with two horses that I'd like to focus on here. They are numbers one and four, Destiny of Souls and Stratospheric. Start off with number four, Stratospheric. Uh, uh, last one, which we have already documented. Um, had that run been over a mile, I think he wins easier, to be honest. Um, that one was just out the top draw. It's, it's hard to ignore what you saw there to the eye. It was uh, the best win on offer, the best uh, performance on offer of late. And I think number four, Stratospheric, if he's in the same mood, will be very hard to beat. Number one, Destiny of Souls. Um, interesting to see him not in a handicap because I read Mike de Cook's column um, that he sends out before the source of last run. And he thinks sort of with his rating coming down to an 83, that got him competitive over time. And, um, and he thought that he was quite shrewd putting him into the 1800 meter um, MR88 in his penultimate start when beating Twin Turbo, who didn't rip up any trees at Turpentine on Thursday. So um, interesting to see Destiny of Souls running in a graduation place. Yeah, I don't really know what to make of him. His run of the Derby trial was okay. Um, I, I'd just like to keep safe of him because I believe that uh, that there's a little bit more to come from number one, Destiny of Souls. And I think if he brings his best, he could be dangerous. Um, but I think number four, Stratospheric, will be hard to beat just on what everyone saw last time out. So it's a bit complicated, although it's a graduation plate because you've got one horse that's on top, but he's badly off form. Of course, he went good. Uh, and tried to get a job done there, but he didn't. Uh, then now at Turfentine. Well, we'll see what happens there because this stable of Tony Peter, I don't know what to make of it all because he's got a lot of runners in the race. He's even got a maiden that he's entered here, uh, number nine, which is Raptor Island. So it could be tricky. Is that the right horse of his four runners that he sends to post? Let me get that right. Yes, he does. Four, seven, nine, and ten. Because I like a bit of number seven, Napoleon, as possibly the roughie in the race there. I know it has a lot of work to do at the weights, but the weights are being skewed by number two, Crimson King. Let's move along to race number seven. It's over 1,450 meters. It's a merit-weighted 74 handicap at the time of recording. Two scratchings here, numbers two and seven. So uh, that brings the field down from, what's it, 14 runners to 12 runners at the time of recording. Alistair, I just want to look at the betting quickly. Number three, Black Egret, is at four to one. Number five uh, is at four to one. Uh, six is at seven to two. Then we move along to number 10, Sage King at eight to one. Seven to one, 
Hey, there's our horse, Alistair. Nkabaisi, number 12, yeah. ran a good race last time out at 7-1. to one. And number 13 at 6-1. to one. I told you that we'll compare notes and I'll give you a report. I tried it with a few dogs and uh, they seem to love it. Instead of bark at me, Alistair, so something's wrong in your home or something's wrong with the horses, the dogs that I've met. These, the owners of the dogs that you met when you were talking to them must have thought that you've absolutely lost the plot. They must have got hold of Fort Napier and said, there's a man at my gate talking <laughs> to my dog saying, he's a BC, please get him off the property. Um, I was mildly encouraged with the run last week. He, he ran as if he needed it, but he looked a little bit dangerous for a while. I think he'll be a lot better with that run under the belt. Um you know, it is what it is with Labisi. You know that he's not going to be too far away. He doesn't win too often, which is obviously a concern. I've got him in my in my play and in my calculations. My first choice here is number five to Zona, Tony Peter trains for Dennis Schwarz. Um, those Cape runs to Le Mans stick out. Even his last run behind Future Swing. Future Swing has gone on and, and done okay since. Um, he's not bad. And we've seen a few horses, it doesn't matter who they go to, horses that come up from Cape Town tend to um grow an extra leg when they come up to the half hole this just fits the bill number five to zona and uh i think that uh, tony pt doesn't make too many mistakes when it comes to well, the peter family don't make too many mistakes when it comes to owners uh, coming to their doors for the first time so i think number five to zona is a very very interesting runner uh he's my top choice here number six vitilius who i didn't like last time at all behind celtic rumors i thought ran a very good race behind celtic rumors there's something about the son of pomodoro i think he'll run nicely and uh, i'd make sure that he's in my play as well i have respect for a few i've narrowed it down to three they're five six and twelve but in the pick six and jackpot you might want to pick them up with three black eagles four in cahoots very very interesting on the vile classic track he loves it out there and and then also number 10, Sage King, although I'd still like to see Sage King go back to a mile 1,800 metres before uh, we can rubber stamp him. Number eight, Vesuvio. He's caused a shock in the past. Can he do it again? Because the ability is certainly there, Alistair. It's just that he's so inconsistent. These have been for him so many times. His biggest problem is at the stalls. He loses his race while they load him. He loses his race at the start. Um, he's the head case. He only ran a week ago. Again, he displayed a tendency of, of giving the hand as a tough time. Um, look, Tyrone Zaki does funny things with horses. So not impossible. Number eight, Vesuvio goes in. Um, I'm just a little bit, I'm, I'm more than once bitten twice shy with him. 5, 6, and 12 for Alistair. That's for the place accumulator. I think you're going to have to look a bit more deep for the pick six here because it doesn't stop there in race number seven. We're on to the lucky last. We're on to the eighth race. It's a classified stakes. It's over 1,000 meters. If everything's going according to plan, wow, this race. We saw it on Tuesday. How was that? It reminded me of the roulette board where the croupier just spins the blank number. Unbelievable. From all the horses in the last leg of the pick six on Tuesday, you get the biggest bomb arriving. Race number eight is over 1,000 meters, and this is how they're betting. Uh, number three, nine to two, four at eight to one, seven at seven to one. We then move along to 11, Samoa at six to one. And uh, I must pay compliments to the uh, team uh, behind uh, British Stiltstaff because uh, it's our good friend down there and uh, well done to them winning with smelting. I mean the horse took forever but the horse got it right and it was Sean Patterson. A very very friendly guy is Sean and a nice guy as well. A very approachable guy and I really like his attitude towards racing. He always is free to chat and he loves his horses. Well done to them with number 11. Uh, with smelting and here they got number 11 samoa and then 14 8 to 1 and then it is uh, 10 to 1 and better the balance i think we have to talk about uh, smelting the other day because i mean that is uh, patience perseverance at its highest i don't know when last i saw a horse winning a maiden uh, plus 40 runs in the maiden ranks uh, credit to to the connections to admit uh, win to um, Sean Patterson and Bridget Stiddall just for sticking with smelting. Um, she stuck me out. She stuck many other people out. Um, there was almost a sense of disbelief around 17 <laughs> that she actually, actually won. But the, uh, the, uh, the irony about smelting, I'm, I'm not for one moment saying that she's going to win her next start, but I almost think with better horses around her, 
that might carry her through to earning a few more steak shakes out the maiden. So um, as, as popular a guy as Sean Patterson is and as popular a filly as Smelting is, um, you know, uh, I, don't, I don't think the steak shakes are going to stop. The wins might be hard to come by, but I think that she'll just continue running her honest races. And if she runs third or fourth from those classified stakes and low-grade fillies and mares handicaps during the winter, I think everybody will be happy. Well, we're giving her air time. Can Western Wishes follow up then? Because she was the filly that beat Smelting last time. I don't really know what to make of Western Wishes, if I'm honest. As you say, I mean, how good can it be when a 41 run maiden um, franks the form? Uh, and that was in a work riders race. Not for me, Dees. I must be honest. I much prefer Smelting Stable Companion number 11, Samoa, who gets the service of Gavin Arena. Gavin gets the best out of Samoa. Um, if she doesn't win, she'll be right there. Um, but my three horses that I'm focusing on here, why is Dancing Dora such a big price? I know that life gets hard for her after winning four in the bounce. And from a rating of 60, she's up to a 75. Her last one came off a 71 when beating second breath. But she ran against much stronger. Feliz Mayor's 86 and MR80 against Boys last time on Guinea's Day. Um, behind Good Queen Best, who subsequently tried feature race level in the Sycamore Sprint over the weekend. Um, I think she's well set up here, number two, Dancing Dora, coming back to a classified stake. She's got 58 and a half kilos. Uh, as we know, fillies and mares do get a good pull at the weights in these classified stakes. And she just makes the cut of her net rating of 75. So um, I think number two, Dancing Dora, could be the, the get-out stakes in race eight. A lot of respect for number three, Letitia's Angel. She beat Var Park last time out, getting her just rewards for consistency. Um, she is what she is. She needs luck in running. If things go according to plan, she can be dangerous. And much like Samoa, she doesn't win. She could be not too far away. And another horse at a price that I have a lot of respect for is number seven, Taya Meeksy. Robbie Sage, by his standards, has been a little bit quiet of late. Samanga Kamalo takes a ride. But this horse has run with Mover and Shaker in his last two. Mover and Shaker was a runaway winner. There's no sign of any Mover and Shaker in this race. And um, he too could be in the right places. Ratings dropped, which might well have been the, the aim of the game for number seven, Trey Amici, along the way. Drawn on the inside, not, not mad about that. But with that said, like I said earlier in the... Uh, in the segment that with the lack of rain around, I think that might be nullified. So there's another horse to watch out for. I'm keen on numbers two and seven. That could be a nice uh, quartet to, to revolve those two horses around. Maybe uh, two and seven by two, three and seven by horses by horses. Three and seven could be the numbers to play around here. And if you're looking for horses in the pick six, well, Alistair mentioned number 11, Samoa, briefly. And I like a 12 to one shot chip. Not going to write this horse off after that big, big run at any price behind good Queen Bess, who was mentioned by Alistair when he spoke about number two, Dancing Dora. And that's number one, Smith and Wesson. So that could be a nice roughie to include in all bets. And that's a wrap, Alistair. Alistair, I just want to go through maybe some yeah, place accumulator numbers for the guys. Okay, so yeah, um, I looked at a place accumulator for this card. Um, it's a 108 grand spend. I've gone bank of four in the first leg, which is great to fair. One o'clock is post time, so punters have got time. But seven, eight, and nine in the uh, first, the majority first time, uh, second leg, race three. But banker number two in race four, that's the third leg of the PA. About one and eight, Perth and Pronto and Haslow Grande. About one and four in the graduation plates, and probably one of the harder graduation plates I've seen. About five, six, and 12, that is the hardest race on the card, about two, three, and seven in the last race of the race, and I quite like my chances. In. Thanks to Alistair Cohen for his help on uh, Gallup TV, and for Alistair Cohen, the entire team at uh, Gallup TV, and myself, Dees Dynan. Well, hopefully you have a great day punting at the Vol Classic track this Thursday. Find all the winners, make a huge profit, and until we meet again, you take care. Salatin <laughs>